Let's take a few minutes to look and see what makes this sonnet by Keats so engaging and powerful. It's all about the imagery, the use of figurative language, and even something as simple as the way that the subjects and verbs might be ordered in the sentence. So I'll show you right now. We're going to start with the first line. Much have I traveled in the realms of gold and many goodly states and kingdoms seen. So he's saying, I've traveled a lot in the in golden realms and seen wonderful, seen goodly kingdoms. But we know that this is a metaphor and that the realms of gold are really um, a reference to reading books, right? So when we, when we, when we're really talking about reading books, but we talk about traveling, I should have done it all, traveling in, re in realms of gold, the travel, the traveling is the reading. Of course, this is a metaphor because he hasn't explicitly made the comparison. He's, he's just said, he's just stated that he traveled to golden realms, but we know that he doesn't literally mean that. So this is figurative language that he is using. And he's figuratively saying that he has read a lot of books. And the simple inversion of subject and verb here, right? Usually you have subject then verb. I have traveled. But here it's have I traveled. Well, why does he do that? Well, because he wants to get much at the beginning. Much have I traveled. So much, right? So the emphasis is on the quantity with emphasis on the large quantity of reading that he has already done. So he's read a lot of books and he describes it in this engaging, exciting way as if he had gone on a trip. And it's not just a regular trip, like a walking trip, but it sounds like when he talks about round many Western islands, it sounds like he sailed around. So it's even a, a Mediterranean cruise of sorts. And the reason why I say Mediterranean, because he's talking about islands and he's talking about these, these, the, this place that holds Apollo in fealty. And of course, well, he could be talking figuratively about various places, but um, Apollo is the um, Greek god of the sun and of, um, and of poetry. Right? Okay. So he's been to, on this exciting trip and he says, and, and people had always told him when he was traveling, oh, but you really, this place is beautiful, but you really need to go to this other place, right? This other wonderful place. And what place was that? That's the place that Homer ruled as his demean or his domain. So you really need to go to Homer's domain. You really need to read the Iliad and the Odyssey if you really want to know what poetry, what great poetry really is. And he had tried, but it never felt as good. The, the air was never as serene as when he read the translation by Chapman. And that's when it came alive for him. So this whole octet, right? The first eight lines of the sonnet, of this sonnet by Keats, the first eight lines all emphasize how he's read all these books, but it was never so wonderful as when he read the translation, English translation of Homer um, that was uh, done by Chapman back in the 1500s. Well, I think we need a new color for the sestet, how about blue, that'd be fun. Okay, so then in the sestet, right, in the, in the final six lines of a sonnet, we know the sonnet has 14 lines. So in this second part, he says, he explains how it felt, because he says, okay, I, I did travel a lot, and it was never as wonderful as then, but then, and then I'm gonna really tell you, then, and then it's also the, inverted felt I. So the emphasis is on how he felt. And you've got the turn here, or the volta, if we want to use the Italian word. Then felt I like some watcher of the skies, when a new planet swims into his ken. So now the poet, the speaker here, is using a simile, right? He says, I felt like, explicitly making a comparison. The speaker is equating himself 
with an astronomer. Oops, bad handwriting. Astronomer, or he goes so far, or an explorer. Because then he says right after that, or like, so like this, like, a, like astronomer, watcher of the skies, or like Cortez. When his eagle eye, when with eagle eyes he stared at the Pacific, and we know the Pacific is the largest ocean, right? So this is the greatest place, just like Homer, sort of greatest poet, um, or greatest works of poetry here, Pacific, most dramatic, awe-inspiring ocean. I don't know if it's most dramatic, actually, it's Pacific means peaceful, but it's in, in its size, right? It's, it is awe-inspiring. So this awe-inspiring ocean is compared to the uh, Homeric epics. So he stared at the Pacific, and all his men looked at each other with a wild surmise. Silent. That's the awestruck part, right? Upon a peak in Darien, on the, on the top of a mountain. Well, you feel like you're, you're just on top of the world. So that's it. Keats, as a reader here, and poet, is on top of the world. That's how he feels, looking out at its beauty in, in, in awe and wonder.